Hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the webinar, which is about the cash flow statement in Odoo and uh, the compliance with IES 7 of the IFRS. My name is Shahzad Iqbal. I'm a chartered accountant and ERP advisor. I'm in Odoo ERP implementations from uh, 2015. So uh, let me take you to the agenda of today's webinar. In this webinar, we would start to know about Odoo and Auckland Odoo ERP. Next is the uh, to know about the business cash flows. And next, we would look into IES 7, which is a statement of cash flows. After that, we will see the cash flow statement in Odoo ERP. And at the end, we would have the QA session. Let's have a quick look to know about Odoo. This is Odoo website. Uh, Odoo is actually the, Odoo is actually a business software and it's a suite of uh, different applications in different categories like finance, human resources, sales, marketing, services, inventory and uh, manufacturing and others. Auckland Odoo ERP is the partner of Odoo. It's a gold partner in UAE, providing Odoo ERP implementation services, training and support. If you want to have a look of Odoo, you can just go to the Odoo, uh, Odoo demo, online demo. You can find it on demo.odoo.com. And uh, when you go to that link, the, this you will land to this window where you will find the list of different applications. Let me take you to the accounting application related to our today's webinar. And here we can see the cash flow statement. Now, the next in agenda is to know about the business cash flows. What are the different cash flows in business? If we see the examples, there are payments to the vendors. This is the cash outflow, receipts from the customers. This is cash inflows, payment of expenses like salaries or other expenses. This is cash outflow. And there would be other examples like buying some assets, for example, buildings or receiving some loan. These all cash flows are classified in different categories. There are three main classifications, business operations, investments, and financing. In business operations, all the transactions, which is related to run the business, like sales of goods, or purchase of goods, uh, business payment of business expenses. So these are the transactions and the cash flow of these transactions is part of business operations. Investment includes like buying of assets, buying of building, plant and machinery. So these all transactions fall under the investments. And then the financing activities like getting some loans for the business, this is the third category. Cash flow is different than income expenses. Cash flow is purely the cash receipt and cash payments in the transactions. But income and expense might be different. For example, the depreciation expense it don't involve any cash flow. So that is not part of the cash outflows. In income, there might be receivables, right? So, uh, the, 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 so the income will not be 
equal to the cash inflow due to that amount which is still to be received. Next, we see the IES 7 checklist. What is there in IES 7 about the cash flow statement guidelines? Uh, if we see, it starts with uh, some guidelines stating the benefits of cash flow information. And then next is the presentation of a statement of cash flows. Um, this is guideline and also the report requirement. And here we see, uh, uh, and here we find that there is, the, the content is related to uh, some description, how to classify the cash flows in operating, investing, and financing activities. Next is the reporting cash flows from operating activities. In IS 7, there are two main methods are given. One is direct method and other is indirect method. method. So uh, the, the, the direct method to present the cash flow from operating activities uh, is, is uh, given in the way that uh, the, the cash received and cash paid are the line items of this report. For example, cash received from the customers, cash paid to the suppliers, so this is example of uh, this is the example of uh, mentioning it as a uh, indirect method as receipt and payment. In indirect method, uh, there there are no cash received or cash paid is mentioned. It start with the net profit or loss, and then there are ad adjustments for the uh, non cash items. For example, the depreciation to reach to the eventually uh, the net cash inflow, net cash outflow. Next, we have the, uh, the cash flow from investing and financing activities. Here we mainly see the cash flows related to buying of, for example, buying of assets or related to equity, loans and deposits, etc. So these were the areas where there are guidelines and also the, the reports, uh, the content of the report is also explained here. And then there are some other guidelines regarding interest, dividend, taxes, investments, foreign currency, etc. And there are some other disclosure guidelines. So this, this was a quick checklist. And uh, when we talk about this checklist, we find that there is no limitation to follow ISA 7 when we are using Odoo uh, software, right? Uh, to go into more details, uh, you can visit the IFRS website and here you can find the detailed guidelines of IES 7. For instance, if I expand this part, here we can see uh, reporting cash flows from operating activities has a direct method, indirect method, and there's the explanation given and all the guidelines given about that. This is how we can uh, see uh, all the checklist what we have presented in detail uh, on this website of IFRS. Okay, now we go to the Odoo and see how Odoo helps us uh, to uh, get this report uh, where, where the uh, cash flows are presented uh, as required in IFRS. And again, uh, remember there are three main parts in presentation. That is cash flow from operating activities, cash flows from investing activities and cash flows from financing activities. Now we see how practically uh, this is presented in Odoo. We go to the Odoo accounting module. 
here in accounting module, just let me quickly brief the accounting module. Uh, then we go to the cash flow statement in reporting. Here in accounting module, we can see the dashboard and On dashboard, there, there are quick links to go to the transactions. Otherwise, we can go to the menus and we can find the menus. Here we can see the menu related to customers and all the transactions with customers and vendor and transactions related to vendors. Then uh, general accounting, uh, accounting items, reporting and configuration. In reporting, we can see here we have the financial reports, including cash flow statement. And then we have other accounting reports. Now we go to the cash flow statement. Okay, here, as we have discussed that in IES 7, cash flows are segregated in three main classifications. And in Odoo, uh, when we go to the go to the cash flow statement, we exactly find this the, the classification in the same way. It starts with the opening balance of cash cash in hand uh, in bank or uh, or in the form of cash, and then <clears throat> here we can see the cash flows from operating activities. And as we discussed, the requirements of IES 7, that under the operating activities, we can see the cash flows from business activities like sales and purchase and other expenses. So for example, here we, we, we have seen this, uh, we can see this cash received from operating activities. And uh, here we can see the product sales whatever cash is received against sales and other items. Then here we have the advances to the suppliers or cash paid for operating activities include expenses, cost of goods sold, taxes paid. So this is how uh, these, uh, these all line items comes under cash flow from operating activities. And next, Next section is cash flows from investing and extraordinary activities. And here we can see uh, there's some fixed assets purchased and the cash outflow for that fixed assets is under this classification, right? And next classification is, next category is cash flow from financing activity. When we go into the cash flow from financing activity, we can see the loan is the loan amount for the loan is received, and that is categorized here in this line. Right. So at the end, uh, there's a there's a summary uh, which sum up what is the closing cash at end of this period, along with all these transactions. This cash flow statement uh, is already uh, configured and uh, uh, as we require uh, to see all the cash flows of business. The only thing what we need to configure is uh, when we set up a chart of accounts. Uh, there's a configuration of, to tag accounts for required classification. For example, in chart of accounts, let me show you the, let me take you to the setup of uh, one account.
let me show you this account product sales and in product sales here in settings on this form uh, we can see there's a field named tag we we have to mark the related section where we want to see this particular uh, head and all the cash flows related to this head uh, here we can see the list so we already have selected the operating activities and uh, we have seen that it was in this particular category uh, under the operating activities here we can see the cash flow from operating activities and you can see product sales account so this is how this account is classified under this category so this is the only small configuration required to uh, get this cash flow statement normally uh, the accounts all the accounts in chart of accounts uh, are tagged with uh, these uh, three classifications and uh, if 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 any account is missing to tag then we can find it separately in cash flow statement and we can correct it for example if i remove this tag and then i go to the cash flow statement let me refresh it now we would we can see now here the product sales and which is under cash flow from unclassified activities so once we remove the tag we would see your account uh, under this uh, this section so uh, we have to carefully tag all the accounts in related activities if we talk about how to uh, tag our accounts in chart of accounts to get in the right place in in our cash flow statement uh, all the income statement uh, accounts what are related to profit and loss accounts all the accounts related to profit and loss account and the accounts related to working capital are required to be tagged as a operating activity and the long-term or fixed assets accounts long-term assets and fixed assets accounts are required to be tagged as a uh, investment activity and any any uh, loans uh, in in liability and the, and the equity part is required to be tagged with the uh, financing activity so this is a general rule you have to carefully go through all the account and uh, we should tag those accounts and check your cash flow statement that all the accounts are classified and your balances are matching with your cash and bank balances in the balance sheet all right so this was about our topic uh, today and if you have any questions uh, just unmute your mic and you can ask any question okay i guess there are no questions so thank you very much for attending this webinar and uh, hope you would join me in my next webinar thank you